Many years ago, the sun hid behind the moon, and six strange symbols were forged from gold, cooled in water drawn from our deepest lock. And when the last symbol was complete, the sorcery finally returned to these shores. The trees and rivers sparkled once more. But soon a vile shadow rose to spread misery throughout the land. And only one who commands the spirits of truth and virtue can defeat the dark forces so unwittingly unleashed. My name is Raven. Hello and welcome to the brand new series of my nostalgia podcast. This is Jack's Throwback Attack. And to start things off in this third series, I have a fantastic guest who shares some wonderful anecdotes of an awesome show on CBBC. So let the nostalgia begin. So if you were a regular viewer of CBBC in the noughties, then no doubt you'll remember the fantasy game show Raven. And I have with me the man who played the title character. It's James McKenzie. Greetings, young warrior. (laughs) I was wondering when you were going to do that, how long it would take. (laughs) It's good to have you on the podcast. Thank you for taking part. Not at all. Thank you for having me. So let's rewind back to the very beginning of Raven, back in 2002. How did you land the role? Um, various ways. Uh, well, I mean, first of all, I was I was very lucky. I was just finishing my last um, few weeks of drama school in Edinburgh. Um, I I had been a professional actor before I went to drama school, and so I was very lucky to still have an agent. Um, and towards the end of drama school, they put me forward for an audition for BBC Scotland, who were auditioning for a new children's television show. Uh, it was a fantasy adventure game show, and all they knew was they wanted they wanted a male, and they wanted someone with dark hair and someone who was Scottish. So um, I went along to the first round of auditions. Um, there was a, a, a wide range of actors there. Actually, they were seeing people from kind of eighteen up to forty eight. You know, they 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 really weren't sure what they wanted. So yes, I did the first um, round of auditions, and then I got a recall. And there I was kind of asked to imagine being a kind of mythical Celtic warlord, half man, half bird, uh, and use like a chair and a stick (laughs) in the room (laughs) to um, be warriors or the woods. And I've no idea what I did, but it seemed to cut the mustard. Um, I can't remember what I did. Uh, I was probably self-conscious and embarrassed, but... uh, I did something right, <laughs> um, and so yeah, I got the part. So I mean, I was very lucky. We, I graduated uh, from drama school on the Saturday uh, in I think it was mid June two thousand and two, and I started filming Raven on the Monday. So I was very lucky. Wow, very lucky indeed. You literally just walked mm. straight into a job off the back of drama school. A lot of people would give their right arm for that opportunity. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Some of my um, fellow students and. Uh, weren't the happiest with me, put it that way. <laughs> but hey-ho. Hey-ho. Um, and, and when you started playing the role, was you aware that you were part of something special or was it a bit of a, a slow burner and over time it was like, oh, this has become very popular now? It's just a funny one because, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, as they say, and you, you can't help but look back at it in a certain way because of what it became. But, you know, at the time, everyone involved, you know, Production team, producers, the crew, and um, we all we all thought it was something pretty special, you know. Uh, the Scottish landscape, the the kind of west coast of Scotland, the we were filming in, at that time in, on the outskirts of of Dunoon on the west coast of Scotland. It was it was beautiful and it captured the kind of essence of the show and the enthusiasm of the kids was just uh, boundless and it just all seemed to kind of come together and so I think when we were doing it yeah we, we did think there was something special but 
at the end of the day, it's up to the powers that be. So we were happy and we had our fingers crossed and hoped that we'd, we would maybe get a second series out of it. But uh, it clearly became very popular very quickly and, and, you know, it was a second series and then the next year it was a third series and then, oh, hang on, actually, let's not do a third series, let's do a third and a fourth series. So you're going to spend your entire summer <laughs> doing Raven. And then the following year we did it again and then pretty much most years we would film two series back to back. So, no, it, it kind of, yeah, it, it, it mushroomed, I suppose. But um, th I think that's a compliment to the show and to the kind of support and its cult status, really, yeah. Certainly, and there was nothing else like it on children's television at the time, I don't think. Not that I can think no, of off the top no. of my head. No, there wasn't. No, there wasn't. I, but I think, I think what, was, what was great about it, I think it ticked lots of boxes for children and parents and grandparents because as far as grandparents and, and were concerned, it was clean, good family entertainment. As far as parents were concerned, it was about encouraging their kids to be imaginative, to use their brains, to work individually or work as a team, but also to think about embracing the outdoors and getting outside and you know all the activities were about climbing trees or swimming and through locks or jumping in burns and so i think that kind of that really resonated with with parents and also it was just on the back of lord of the rings um films coming out and so i think you know kind of medieval fantasy was just in everyone's heads so i think we were kind of quite lucky to ride that kind of wave as well you know Certainly, medieval fantasy is always very popular. W when you started playing the role and you know you started to develop the character of Raven, did you mm. draw upon any influences or any characters or actors that you like when it come to shaping the role? And not not any kind of actors particularly. No, um, I was kind of lucky because we started from nothing, so I was lucky to kind of try and make it my own and. It was interesting because the first series was, you know, if you look back at it now, it's it's it has more of the game show element to it. And as time went on, there was more and more kind of dramatic elements added to the show as well. Um, so I think the, the first series was a bit of a kind of tester, you know. My, my costume wasn't quite as cool as it became. You know, I had a, a weird rat's tail hairdo, which wasn't, the, the the best <laughs> um you know but the kind of essence of the show and its premise was there and and it was a great kind of starting point but no i, I think because we decided um to take the show in quite a, a strong direction into series two you know like the the producers and things wanted to 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 really shape and change my look and and really kind of embrace the the raven side of it that the, you know the 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 bird side of the character and so they kind of said to me that they wanted me to be a bit sterner to be a bit more um kind of well warrior like and um, more of a teacher um mm -hmm. so i think that can, th that's where some of the kind of character came came through um and then probably in time maybe Maybe I took on a bit of Legolas just accidentally, maybe, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, it's funny actually because um, earlier on today I had a skim through like a couple of ep episodes like going through the years just to refresh mm -hmm. my memory. And uh, yeah, the first series does look very different to the version that most people remember now. Um, like you say, the costume was different. You didn't have the the, the staff, you didn't have the feathers, mm -hmm. you had the, the rat's no, I had tails. That bowl. I had a bowl that I had to wipe my hand across that became... Mm -hmm a total continuity nightmare for filming and it became a total um, annoyance of a prop to carry around. But yes, yeah, yeah, yes. I've forgotten about that. <laughs> and uh, the other difference is, is um, there's, there's less of the um, the morphing into an actual raven and uh, in mm. the in the opening sequence you're kind of like a, a hooded cloaked figure. And you, yes. Yes, and you blow a horn and everybody comes running. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, I'd forgotten about the... That's yes. right. Yes, <laughs> of course. Yes, and then they uh, they kind of dropped all that, and then they, they developed the the version that we know better with the that great costume. We'll talk more about that uh, a mm. bit later on. So you mentioned that the show was filmed on the west coast of Scotland. Um, where exactly was it filmed, and what was an average filming day like? Um, well, we 
we filmed in two different places for Raven. Um, the first few years, we filmed in a place called Dunoon, which is just um, west of Glasgow, um, uh, just in the outskirts of Dunoon, and a place called Castle Towered, which was a kind of giant, big 18th century kind of castle that was now then being used as a outdoor education centre, but it had huge um, grounds with it that kind of covered everything from forest to loch to white water to a, a mountain and ornamental lakes so it kind of it was amazingly kind of perfect and, and fitted the bill for the first few years and then latterly we up ship and moved to Aviemore which is just south of Inverness in the Scottish Highlands because we were given the opportunity to go up there. There was even more dramatic views, mountains, lochs, um, yeah, a lot of white water, a lot more um, outdoor adventure um, opportunities for the series. Um, so those are the two places we, we filmed. But yeah, the first few years was Dunoon. Um, and the second part of your question was, what was an average day? Is that right? An average filming day, so like from the, the, the very start of the day, the rehearsal, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Uh, well, it would generally be quite an early start for me because I would have to be <clears throat> uh, make up quite early. So I'd kind of usually I'd usually get up about f half past five, um, have a throw some breakfast uh, down my face, uh, have a quick look at my lines, um, get in the shower, get the costume on because I would have that in my at that, at that time I was in a hotel and then in uh, kind of self catering accommodation. But I would have the costume with me, so I would get into the costume and then. Um, the makeup artist would, would come to where I was staying and then she would make me up at where I was staying. So that would kind of take about 45 minutes or so uh, to kind of make me tanned and swarthy and give me the uh, the uh, Mohican type hairdo with the feathers in the back. Um, and then we would travel to location or to set um, with the idea of being there at kind of quarter past half past seven because we would start on camera about eight o'clock with the kids but the great thing about the, the the young warriors was they were they would nine times out of ten would be staying on location so in at castle tower at the outdoor education center they stayed there and then similarly when we moved to Aviemore, they were they were there so whenever we were you know due to turn over on camera unless it was a remote location they didn't always have too far to travel so it, it kind of it worked well, but yeah, we would tend to film all day until about about five o'clock ish, and um, depending on light and weather, and obviously we were quite often restricted uh, in terms of the hours that the, the the warriors the kids could work. So we always had to keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, generally eight till five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the the Scottish weather wasn't a problem too many times, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're obviously being sarcastic. Um, the Scottish <laughs> weather was problematic. I would say we did a six-day shoot, a six-day week, so I would say at least four days a week. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and the midges on top of that, the um, yeah, they would eat you alive. Um, <laughs> and, uh, of course, as a very um, heroic stern scholastic kind of medieval warrior i i could not be affected by midges and flinch in any way shape or form on camera so that was an absolute nightmare so as soon as the um director of the first ad would shout cut i would then uh, run around screaming and scratching <laughs> um, because uh, l latterly i only found out after about 10 years that midges are attracted to two things they're attracted to carbon dioxide so you can breathe in as much as you want, but never breathe out. And uh, they are attracted to black. So I was ah. kind of stuffed. <laughs> and, black costume, uh, and I obviously had to breathe out to see all my raven lines. So that was it. The midges loved me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the illusion was shattered for the for the contestants then as soon as the camera uh, went off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, get them off me! <laughs> also, it was a nightmare as well because of my beard. They, they, were, they would... They would all swarm and kind of crawl in and around my beard, and of course, thankfully, the camera would never pick it up. But as soon as they, as soon as they shouted "cut," it was just yeah. That's the, unfortunately, it's a a downside of filming on the on on the west coast of Scotland. You mm -hmm. are plagued by the midges. You have beautiful views and stunning scenery, 
but uh, the midges do like to have a wee nibble. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> and um, how long did it take to film an entire series? Uh, generally about eight weeks or so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, about eight weeks. And um, we should go on to some of the challenges on the show um, mm. that the Warriors had to undertake. Very physical and sometimes quite challenging play on your fears. Were there any that the, 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 the contestants or the Warriors had a go at that you thought, um, I'd like to have a go at that? Or you did have a go at yourself once filming had kind of stopped? I had uh, <clears throat> always wanted to do the deep loch because it just looked horrific. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they had these these young warriors had to just jump into this freezing cold Scottish loch and just swim. And I thought that was always a, it was a dead simple challenge. You know, there was, there was nothing terribly technical about it. There wasn't a lot of safety wires involved or clever props or amazing set building. It was literally just down to a test of strength and stamina and mind over matter. You know, it was just swim to a certain point, turn around and swim back. And I always thought that was, one of the the kind of under underestimated challenges that that came along for the warriors, you know. So I, I always quite fancied that. Um, I never did it because, um, well, it was just too cold. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, I wouldn't be allowed because of insurance. Um, the the height challenges, things like leap of faith and all that kind of stuff. I, I was always in huge admiration of the warriors for doing those. Um, whereas, even though I am technically half a bird. You wouldn't have caught me up with those because I'm not a big fan of heights. Um, but obviously I did uh, have to and did on several occasions attempt the way of the warrior. <laughs> but I do hasten to add attempt because there was no way on God's green earth that anyone was ever going to let me complete it. So um, the crew and or the design team um, would always have it in for me. And, and uh, if I ever had a go... They were going to take me down. <laughs> yeah, um, the leap of faith was one that I, I was thinking of. And yeah, I wouldn't attempt that either. So mm-hmm. um, a lot of respect for those that did. And uh, mm-hmm. just the image of you having to go away of the warrior as well. That's something, you know, I, I hope the footage is out there somewhere if they ever did film it. <laughs> I really hope they didn't. I really hope they didn't <laughs> film that because it wasn't, it wouldn't have been pretty. Put it that way, it would not have been pretty. It's There'd probably, have been lots yeah. of hands and feet and, yeah. <laughs> it's probably... Yeah, I wouldn't have been yeah. as um, heroic and uh, as, the, as the young one, as the kids, you know. It's probably collecting dust in somebody's loft somewhere. <laughs> probably, yes. Yes, it'll, it'll come out at some point. Shame me. <laughs> no, it's good. It's, it's good to hear that. I mean, the way of the warrior was the, the bit that uh, I think everybody remembers. That was a very, very tough course. You could almost say it was kind of the medieval version of, of Ninja Warrior. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, that's, yeah, it was, it was there to sort the, the wheat from the chaff, I suppose, is that, um, to be blunt about it, you know, but that's, that was its point. You know, it was, it had to be difficult. And I think we only, I'd be lying if I knew the exact stats, but I think in you know ten or over ten series, I think we I think we only had a handful of of young people who who actually completed it. So yeah, and when they did, it was a huge, huge moment for for them and and for us. It was it was yeah, it was fantastic when they did. It was a real a real moment, <clears throat> a sense of achievement, you know. Absolutely, and imagine the street cred on the playground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they're probably even now, to this day, probably still saying, yeah, I beat the uh, the way of the warrior. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. And um, the other thing as well is, um, obviously, there was a lot of really cool special effects on the show. Now, how did yourself and the contestants find adapting with the various things that wouldn't actually appear until post-production and having to pretend that lightning bolts are being fired, for instance, and stuff like that? Well, yeah, that... <sighs> What was brilliant about the, the the young warriors, the kids that took part in Raven, is that they embraced everything about it really quickly. They were so keen to be there and, and to, to be part of the world, so they embraced their kind of medieval roles and their fantasy warrior type roles. But they also totally embraced the idea <clears throat> that they were part of a crew and part of a fil- filming something. And so they very quickly understood the ins and outs of how to film and that certain actions or certain lines that I might say would have to be repeated. 
So like, for instance, if it was a, a lightning bolt coming out of my staff, then, you know, I would, I would gesticulate and fire with my staff and then I would freeze and they would freeze and we'd wait a few seconds and then I would repeat the action again so that that would then give the editors in post-production a chance to get in with their um, uh, computer scissors and chop it all up and put it all together. But yeah, the kids were great. They they just totally adapted very quickly. I mean, nine times out of ten, they, they were kind of like, so uh, James, is this a rehearsal or is this a take? Is this take one or take two? You know, like they were, so we go back to number one positions or... <laughs> and and if God forbid if I ever f dropped a line or forgot a line, they would um, they would uh, put me straight and and laugh at me. <laughs> they didn't have a lot of respect for you when the cameras were off. <laughs> no, well, I tried to make that part of it, you know, mm -hmm. because I I, w I would always go and meet the young warriors the night before we started filming, so that they could remind themselves that I am not a scary medieval um, warrior teacher who will, you know, frighten them to do things that they might not initially want to do, you know, I, that I am just a guy called James who's here to say hiya and let's have fun. Um, and so I tried to kind of have two versions of me, you know, and, and, and but that was what was great about the Warriors. They they embraced it very quickly, you know. Mm -hmm. No, good, good, good. And um, we mentioned this earlier on, um, I want to go on to it in a bit more detail. Um, the, the fantastic costume that Raven had, and also the hairstyles, because like you said, in the early series you had rat's tails, and it became like a, a Mohican, even like a bit of a mullet at one point. I mean, oh, yes. that was your actual hair, wasn't it, that you had to have cut like that? Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, uh, the rat's tails at the beginning were actually glued to my own head. Mm -hmm. So whenever we wrapped filming for the day or I had a weekend off, I would have to always, no matter come rain or shine or blistering sun, I would always have a have to have a beanie hat to cover it up because I didn't want people to think that I'd actually chosen that out of choice, you know, because <laughs> it was a it was a real statement, you know, just at the offset offset on the side of my head down down over my kind of shoulder. It was a bit of a yeah, it was a statement, uh, and then yes, of course, latterly the Mohican, and um, also uh, in the middle of of Raven, there was the uh, the mullet for a while as well. So yes, no, I had to I had to um, rock those in in Civi Land as well when we were not <laughs> filming. So that was um, that was interesting, um, but yeah, I think I think they just tried to adapt the look in terms of you know the beard might got might have got a little bit of a change here and there, and the hair got a bit of a change just to help freshen things up or show that there's been a passage of time with a series. Um yeah. But I did I had some interesting looks. There was a couple of years where I was particularly orange as well, I think, in terms of my, my skin swarthiness. Um but uh yeah, these were all all part of the rich tapestry of Raven, you know. Absolutely. But I imagine when you were rocking those haircuts and having to go back into CV Land you probably didn't go out as much, or maybe not on as many nights out or anything like that. <laughs> no, no, because I would, I was very recognisable. Uh, it was kind of difficult to maybe go out for something to eat or a drink with the crew or whatever, because I might be wearing jeans and a shirt, but I was also rocking a very particularly cut beard and um, dark hair in a potential mullet or something similar. So yes, I did stand out rather and people would kind of spot me and go you are you that raven guy you you yeah so it yeah <laughs> it was it was a strong look a strong look it was and uh, the costume as well absolutely fantastic um one thing that i wonder is since um filming has finished were you ever allowed to keep the costume or any of the props that you used on the show well i the costume was kept for quite a while under lock and key at the BBC because even after we'd kind of finished filming, there were still occasional personal appearances that I might do or appear on, on, on the odd other programme for the BBC as Raven. Um, and then, of course, we we did um, further series latterly of Raven. But, um, yes, I was tempted, uh, but I could... I could never find the costume. It was always getting moved around, depending on where the BBC Scotland costume department was being stored at the time. 
as they were kind of moving between buildings. Um, and then latterly, actually, a few years ago, I was I had a stint in the BBC Scotland soap opera, River City, and it turned out I'd heard in the grapevine that a lot of the costumes from various BBC shows were being stored there. So I went on the hunt for it and I found it. And then I asked the um, the props master there, I said, well, if the costume's here, surely the staff of power is here. And he was like, I'm f- I'm afraid, mate, you're not the first one to ask. <laughs> Other people have been asking about this, that your staff <laughs> of power. And uh, nah, it's been stolen. Oh, no. So, yeah, because I always had designs on that, on my mantelpiece, you know. But uh, no, it was stolen. Someone has nicked it. I'm absolutely gutted because that was always going to end up in my house. But no, 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 that is not to be. So when I find them, I will kill them. <laughs> if it turns up on eBay, they're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I've got a few. I've got a few kind of golden rings, and um, I do have the <laughs> the stunt head for my staff of power. So. Mm-hmm. He was affectionately known as Jake, uh, my staff, because the the actual real raven in the opening titles that morphs into me, uh, he was called Jake, so we named my staff uh, Jake. So quite, you could quite often hear on the set someone shouting, uh, has anyone seen Jake? Because <laughs> um, I'd usually misplaced him somewhere in a bush or against the, um, the catering truck or something. Um, but no, I do have the stunt head for Jake, so if Jake's head ever got damaged, they had a replacement head. Um, and I've got a few golden rings and a kind of you know a skull and and a few bits and bobs. I've also got one of the original sections of map. So in in the first earlier series of Raven, kind of up to about five or six, I think we had the 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 world of the you know the map, and you would between challenges you would travel through the map, which was beautifully kind of hand illustrated. And and I was I was given a section of that which I have framed on my wall at home. Um, latterly that became digitised, of course, but uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've got a few bits and bobs. Oh, that's nice. It'd be rude not to. Absolutely. It's just a shame that you haven't got that. I've just got this image now of, um, you know how people have like trophy fish over their yes. mantelpiece? Just yep. this staff on the, you know, <laughs> on this plaque on the on the wall. Oh, oh. when I find them, honestly. Oh, <laughs> when I find them. Uh, it's a pity they didn't make. Uh, I mean, was was there ever like more than one? Like, you know, they must have obviously have gone through a few over the series or something like that. Uh, well, yeah, like I say, they they kind of they separated it, so they had a few um, replacement staffs and replacement heads. But um, after after Raven kind of finished, I think it was all gotten rid of because they knew they had they still had the one, and so there wasn't another way to get any. The the, the, the closest I came because I did ask, I did get in touch with the designer and say, please, please, someone's nicked the staff. Do you have another one? And they were like, no, all I've got is the stunt head and I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. So that's that's the closest I've come to getting Jake back. Yeah. <sighs> well, I don't know what to okay, say. It's okay, we'll I'm not upset about it. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure somebody now, some big fan of Raven's going to probably hunt it down or do a <laughs> or do a crowdfund to uh, build another one or something, That'd something crazy. That'd be brilliant, yeah. <laughs> And um, so Raven, when it became really popular about halfway through, um, there was a few spin-off shows as well, such as yes. Raven, The Island, The Dragon's Eye and The, the Secret mm-hmm. Temple, which was actually filmed on location in India, which must have been an incredible experience, if warm in that February costume. <laughs> um, yes and yes. Uh, yes, going to India, um, to Hyderabad, to film The Secret Temple was... Oh, <laughs> I mean, it was just a kind of once in a lifetime thing, really. When, when the call came through to say that it was had been given the go ahead, that was just mind blowing. I mean, the the uh, the idea of being able to go to a different continent and film Raven, you know, for kind of I mean, I was out there for about ten weeks. It was just absolutely mind blowing. You know, it was the closest that I felt it was the closest I was ever going to come to like going abroad or to somewhere glamorous to 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 film. You know, that kind of Hollywood film kind of opportunity and it was yeah it was just mind blowing culturally and you know I mean the the people the food the the climate was just stunning the and where we were filming you know the 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 Ramaji film city on the edge of Hyderabad and their facilities and what they had it was basically like the kind of Bolly 
Bollywood's um, Universal Studios, and so I mean, it just the series just looked stunning. It looked stunning, and I got to sample Kingfisher and curry for ten weeks, so it's not a bad life, really. Oh, curry's my favourite food, so I'd be happy with that life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, Dancy, the second part of your question, it was sweltering. Yes, it was kind of like late thirties, kind of early forty degrees in that costume, so it was pretty unbearable. I mean, I. I hardly ever bothered using the kind of air conditioning because it was kind of pointless, you know. Otherwise, I would I would never have adapted. So I would you'd just often find me hiding behind a bush, really, and uh, trying to kind of get the shade and let my costume kind of adapt and my body adapt to it because it was just so full on. Yeah, and don't they say the worst thing that you can wear in the summer and in the heat is black? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you suffered for your art. <laughs> I did, I did, but again, I was happy to suffer because it, we were just in such a stunning place. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I think the series is it's it's my personal favourite just because of the the exciting location and and it's the way it looked because it just it did it look stunning. It was, it was good, and it was different, different uh, yeah. to get out of Scotland for a bit. <laughs> yeah. And um, a lot of people as well compare Raven to a, a similar medieval fantasy show that was on before called Nightmare, and uh, also that it had elements of the Crystal Maze as well. Would you agree, and were you a fan of those shows as well? Oh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I. If anyone's never heard of Raven and I, I want to explain it to them, I would say it's a cross between Lord of the Rings and Crystal Maze. Um, so, yes, I think Crystal Maze is a very accurate description in terms of its kind of game show element. Um, and um, the Nightmare connection, absolutely. I mean, I grew up watching Nightmare. I loved it. Um, and so that kind of the, the medieval aspect of it is is perfect description using nightmare i mean the obviously the only difference being that that was virtual reality and we were well i suppose reality and in inverted commas because we were you know actually filming it in locations and on sets and things uh, although obviously it wasn't a real fantasy medieval world but you know what i mean i'm going into a kind of pandora's box a kind of um what was that film with leonardo dicaprio that yeah, with a spinning top, Inception, worlds within worlds within worlds, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah, um, whenever I describe Raven to uh, you know older people who haven't seen the show, who grew up in the 80s and 90s, I always describe it as, think of Nightmare, but on a bigger scale, bigger budget, and outdoors. And that's pretty much an accurate Absolutely. description. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> and... Um, uh, a lot of people as well compare Raven's outfit to that of Jon Snow in Game of Thrones. I'm sure you've heard this a million times and there's lots of memes out there about it. I have to say, I think they missed a trick by not giving you a cameo in it. Well, I obviously have to agree with Jack. I think that would have been the right decision for <laughs> HBO. They needed me uh, as a cameo, absolutely. Uh, and I would have loved that (laughs) because I I loved Game of Thrones Um, yes uh, people often uh, will say oh you you know they'll see a picture oh is that Jon Snow I'm like no and uh, my kind of retort is usually well listen I had the feathers and leather before Jon Snow (laughs) so but yes it does have a very kind of Night's Watch feel to it yeah and uh, like I say, it, it's, HBO did miss a trick not giving you a cameo because they did give a cameo to um, Ed Tudor Pole, who did Crystal Maze for a couple of series after Richard O'Brien. They missed That's a trick. That's right, yeah. Yes, they did. They I did. remember spotting that and going, ah. <laughs> I recognise his face, yes. Recognise his face. They, they, did, they did do the <laughs> other decision to give Ed Sheeran a cameo, which mm. was just weird. Yeah, it was. You can't not look at him and go, well, that's Ed Sheeran. <laughs> yes. But yes. Oh, dear. If you, if you could have played any character in Game of Thrones, you know, if, let's say, this is back when the show, you know, was a new thing and there were casting mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. If there was any character that you could have played, which one would it be? The Hound. The Hound. <laughs> yeah, I loved uh, Rory McCann's character just because he was sarcastic, mm-hmm. grumpy, mean, moody. Um, built like the side of a house, which I am not. Um, <laughs> an an amazing warrior, which I am not. Uh, and um, but he had a a real heart, you know. And there was a real kind of caring side. So I'd love to have played that part because he, 
Yeah, I think you did it really well. That was great. Absolutely. Although I think you might end up shattering a few childhoods by doing that character because he was so... Um, I mean, he was quite horrible in some scenes and prone oh, was, for yeah. his foul mouth as well. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, that would have... Uh, yeah. It would have been the complete complete contrast. <laughs> yeah, Raven with a potty mouth wouldn't be quite the same, would it? No. <laughs> but no, um, what, uh, to be fair, I agree, he was a great character and, and one mm. of my favourites in the end. Um, I, I, did, I did like that character. And uh, can we also agree that Navar was a bigger baddie than the Night King? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And, and actually, clearly more difficult to kill. <laughs> because Navar... Is still going. Never still out there somewhere. You know, he. he I never got my comeuppance, um, with with uh, with Neva. Whereas the Night King was finished off by uh, Arya. So, I think if you were to um, put Neva and uh, the Night King in a kind of Harry Hill type fight <laughs> situation, um, I think Neva would whip his ass. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because I've seen a, a meme going round um, where the, the, there's these ones that go around where the, like, the name a show or name a famous person and it's deliberately the wrong person or somebody who looks very alike. And it yeah. says something like, um, oh, I loved watching Game of Thrones. And it's a picture of, uh, <laughs> it's a picture of Raven. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. I've seen that one going around a few times. The other one that they do, of course, is they, they always put a picture of me and then they say, that's so Raven. Yeah, you know, like the the, the Disney Disney mm. show with Raven Simone. So yeah, yeah or <laughs> vice versa. Which often <laughs> Talking of memes, there was a uh, a kind of great. Um, it wasn't actually a meme, but it was just a, a Twitter thing about a year ago. But yeah, it was about a year ago, and it was um, RuPaul's Drag Race mm -hmm. UK had put out a, a tweet. Um, my, my wife's a massive fan of RuPaul's Drag Race. And I, I, mean, I, I, I don't even follow it like on Twitter or anything like that, but suddenly mm -hmm. it, it was made aware to me on Twitter. And basically what they'd done is uh, the BBC had put out on their Twitter account for RuPaul's Drag Race UK had put out this picture of um, one of the drag queens from the original RuPaul series who was called Raven. Mm -hmm. And then basically, so the picture was Raven in the US and then the picture of this amazing drag queen. And then... <laughs> Next to it was Raven in the UK in a picture of me, <laughs> which of course I just thought was genius. It was it was very very funny and it, it yeah it went bonkers on on the uh, f Twitter f on my f kind of feed for about I don't know three or four days. People were um, were kind of going were going mad for it. Um, so yeah, it's funny how it, it just every now and then it kind of has this little um, release again. Like just today, I think uh, some. Um, Someone made me aware that a lad Bible had put up something about Raven on online, and uh, it kind of has had loads of people um, rem reminding themselves and having wee nostalgia trips about Raven, which then makes my kind of Twitter feed go <laughs> slightly crazy. <laughs> yes, I think what's nice though is that you embrace it and you love it, and you, you're happy to you know talk to people and retweet yeah. and like, and oh, it's you great don't fun. get it's bored of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, Giving people warrior fun warrior names, or mm -hmm. you know, talking to them in kind of full Raven speak or whatever, it's great because I remember growing up and thinking, you know, watching things like um, Quantum Leap or um, Red Dwarf, and you know, I've I've been lucky enough to do comic cons and I've met people from The Walking Dead. I've met people from um, I've met the majority of the cast of of Red Dwarf. I'm I'm really good friends with them, with. Uh, um, I'm thinking of her character name, of course, of of Holly, the uh, the computer oh, in yes. Red Dwarf. Hattie um, Hayridge. Hattie Hayridge, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm really good pals with Hattie. And uh, we exchange texts quite often. And that's taken me a long time to not fanboy about, <laughs> you know, like going out for dinner with Hattie or, you know, having a chat and sitting next to Chris Barry at a Comic-Con is like, that was my, absolutely my childhood. And so to have that opportunity to talk to them and talk about the show or hear anecdotes about the show or be involved in it is, is an amazing thing for me, you know, in a kind of nostalgia trip. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm in the lucky enough position to, to, to do that for somebody else, then yeah. And obviously I'm biased because I think Raven was a, a cracking show, so I'm happy to, to do that. And it's it's good fun. You know, I think it's a it's a testament to the show that it still invokes such a kind of reaction or a kind of um, nostalgia trip for people. So yeah. 
It absolutely so. does, yeah. <laughs> and um, so Raven, the original series, finished in 2010. And then unexpectedly, seven years later, it comes back for a short time, this time with a new Raven played by Aisha Toussaint. I think I've pronounced mm-hmm. that right. Mm-hmm. And uh, But you came back as well as Raven evolved to make occasional appearances. Um, what was it like when you received that message that it was coming back and uh, to don the costume once again? Uh, it was it was very strange. I mean, I think I I didn't realise that f- for many years BBC Scotland had been pushing the powers that be in in London and Salford to to try and have Raven recommissioned because of its popularity and because of you know we have all these amazing locations on our doorstep um, and you know children had grown up and generations had changed and they felt that there was still a, a, a gap a market for Raven you know so. But I had, in my head, I'd, I'd written it off. You know, it'd been seven years. I was pretty, you know, I think the sh- I'd, by that time the ship had sailed as far as I was concerned. And then to get the phone call, I was, yeah, overwhelmed. I mean, it was a weird phone call because at first it was, to, Raven's being recommissioned. Just thought I'd let you know that's great news. But dot, 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 dot. <laughs> so that was a bit of a strange one because obviously they were <clears throat> deciding to shift and change the format slightly and introduce this. Um, this other kind of character as well. So there was a bit of toing and froing. I'm not going to lie, um, but I think we 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 got there in the end. And I think, I mean, I'm still not hundred percent happy about being being called Raven of Old, but you know, <laughs> I think you know, I think there's a slight element of how dare they. <laughs> um, no, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, to come back after seven years, it was just amazing. And then. It was really surreal to to put the costume back on um, in the in the BBC dressing rooms in, in Pacific Key in Glasgow. It was weird. I mean, it smelled a little bit for a start, um, but uh, it was the actual because there's original only so, you, there's only so much you can do with cleaning a, a mm. costume. You know, a costume like that, leather trousers and a kind of one-off mm. feathered cape. You can't really stick them in the washing machine. So. No. That was a, a, you know, an interesting order. Um, but it was weirdly like, put, the whole thing was weirdly like putting on a kind of old comfy jumper. You know, everyone's got those kind of hoodies or jumpers in their wardrobe or their chest of drawers or whatever that they always kind of go to that they know there's going to be comfy and comforting. And, you know, it was, yeah, it was very strange. Very strange, but amazing. Um, I loved it. And, yeah, and, and so to be this kind of, I suppose the best way to describe it would be a kind of feathery Obi Wan Kenobi <laughs> in this kind of, you know, reanimation, re retelling of Raven was, was brilliant. Yeah, to be able to do it again for two series it was it was fantastic. I mean unfortunately my time in it was very short, you know, I I was only I only had in total about a week of filming for it. You know, whereas normally I would have done sixteen weeks with two series. So it was strange. But I'm really glad that I was part of it I think it would have been very strange to have remounted the series and have it so similar to the old series Mm -hmm. but not have my character in it I think it would have been a bit strange so yeah yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be part of it yeah, good stuff, good stuff. It, 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 it was uh, a surprise to see it coming back. I mean, the old fans were like, oh, no, there's another Raven, you know. Yeah. But um, Yeah, it was funny because I actually got to the point where on social media I had to say, look, the rumours are true, Raven is back, but so am I because, you know, like lots of people were saying like, oh, my God, they've killed you, you're dead, Raven's dead, no. And I'm like, no, 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 I am going to be part of it, I'm coming back, and so was the series. But, yeah, it was that was a phenomenal thing, that was... I mean, I kind of I got bombarded for a few days with 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 Twitter and social media, and I kind of, but it was lovely because it was this massive wave. I keep using the the word, but it's appropriate, really. This massive wave of nostalgia from kind of twenty somethings who'd grown up with Raven and the fact that it was back. You know, they were now they're now out in the world of work, or they're, they're students in the middle of studies, and suddenly they were all stopping everything and they were getting around their TVs and watching Raven again and that was that was a really really cool thing to to kind of be part of you know and to to have that kind of second wave of it it was yeah it was really cool I mean obviously there was a few drinking games played by students that I wouldn't (laughs) condone whenever I said let let the challenge begin but obviously I couldn't condone that kind of behavior always (laughs) always hydrate always hydrate (laughs) 
<laughs> I mean, yeah, it's nice that they did a new version because there would have been children that probably never saw the original version that were watching the new one. But it's nice that they put in those nods for the, the fans of the, the yeah. oldest one because they could have just completely distanced it and said, right, this is this version, that's that mm-hmm. version. Like yeah, like yeah. that has happened with revivals of, of old game it shows. Has, yeah. um, but um, mm-hmm. it's nice that they kept in that that little gem for us older fans that uh, remember it back when it started some nearly yeah. 20 years ago which is frightening but I'm <laughs> yeah tell me about it yeah <laughs> it doesn't seem that long it's ago. when it's when you meet someone and they say oh my goodness i used to love raven uh i'm trying to get my son or my daughter to watch it on youtube and you're like oh my god <laughs> a second you know you've, yes. you've got a child you shouldn't be old enough to have a child but then again the warrior who won the very first series of of Raven? You know he's he'll be in his late twenties by now. In fact, he'll probably be older than that. No, he'll be yeah, late twenties at least. So I mean that's frightening. Do you ever get contacted by um, former warriors on the show? Uh, a friend of mine uh, who's a was doing a, a panto and uh, she came across a, a warrior. Um, he was um, part of the professional dance company. In the pantomime, and he he um he kind of said, "Oh my, you know James," and and kind of introduced the the fact that he was a a former winner, a former Ultimate Warrior. Um, there was a young lad. Um, the warrior name was Jado. Jamie was his name, and he um, I I used to see him quite a lot actually because it turned out we didn't realise until the end of filming that he literally re- lived round the corner from me in Edinburgh <laughs> at the time where I lived. Um, so we finished this kind of intense experience, and he became this ultimate warrior uh, up in um, in in Dunoon, actually. And then um, we a week later, I, I bumped into him um, in Astas doing the shopping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was rather surreal. Absolutely. And um, you going on about drinking games, actually, it reminds me. Um, the amount of times me and my best friend from school um, on a night out have quoted Raven and kind of mm-hmm. squeezed Raven quotes into yeah. what we're doing. I mean, I won't offend you by doing an impression. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Go on, you've got to do oh, it. Come okay. on, do the voice. <clears throat> oh, God, I'm going to embarrass myself what's, now. Give us the context first, Jack. Come on, give us the context. Um, we, we're, what's the situation? Where are we? Are we in a fast food we're chain? In, or in we a, a nightclub. In a bar, in nightclub, a bar or nightclub. Right, okay. uh, it's somewhere mm-hmm. in Wolverhampton or Birmingham and mm-hmm. say something like, um, careful young warrior having a shot of Sambuca will be very dangerous or something like that or yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I see you have uh, I see you have fallen over and thrown up after just four pints yeah. <laughs> that will cost you a life <laughs> and then just a like life. just exactly. uh, and yeah. then do a fake waving of, a, of an imaginary staff of power staff. <laughs> love it, love it yes. we, ha- we have been yeah, prone to the- do it <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, I don't think you're first. You're not the first, and you're not the last. Lots of people have said that to me. That and uh, the fact that when they were kids, they were, they, they made their parents build them a way of the warrior type oh obstacle God. course in their back garden. You know, I'd love used to that. go off and yeah. Well, I, I I wanted my parents to build a crystal maze in my garden, so I can. Oh, <laughs> that'd have been cool. I can uh, imagine but it. Mind you, there's only so much you can do with kind of bits of wood, cardboard boxes, and some <laughs> sticky back plastic. You know, but I'm sure. Parents across the country tried. Yes, uh, th- that would have been an interesting Blue Peter make. It would have been. Yeah. <laughs> that was a. Sur- I got that. Raven went on Blue Peter. I went on Blue Peter. It was bizarre. It was very mm. bizarre. Yes. I even got a Blue Peter badge, which is oh. um, pretty cool. But yes, I, I ended up on an episode of Blue Peter, which was just a very surreal experience. Yes, you know. yes. Um, looking online for research, um, that I saw there was a clip where you went on Smart as well. Smart, and, yes. And uh, yeah. and also there was a clip where you're in the the CBBC studio as Raven, and um, oh, I've forgotten his name, and he's a, he's a comedian now, uh, the presenter, and he comes out in a budgie costume. I've completely forgotten his name. It's Ian Sterling, isn't That's it? That's it. Yes, Ian Sterling. That yeah, that that um, does the. He's a comedian and he does the voiceover for Love Island that's and all it. that. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ian was a yeah. That's right. He was a came out in a budgie costume. It was him and <laughs> um, Dodge the dog. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was quite funny. Uh, no match for Raven. I am the budgie. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not going to work, is it? No. <laughs> the thing is, though, uh, if you watch it, is um, you almost break 
uh, character. You you're trying so hard not to laugh <laughs> at certain points. Well, do you know that it's not? It was never fair in these CBBC <laughs> situations. They would always get Raven to appear. You know, obviously it was when a new series was coming on or whatever, and so it would be there to kind of help promote it or whatever. But the producers and people behind the scenes always would go for let's put. Raven in the most surreal situation his character could possibly be, you know, so either involving something very surreal and kind of cartoonish or, you know, having to kind of embrace something technological or something, you know, something that Raven himself would never come across. And so I was always getting thrown in the deep end. And of course, they all wanted me to stay in character. And so the presenters were always at it, trying to to make me corpse, trying to get me to, to break um, I, I think I, I think I made it unscathed over the years, but it was it was never easy. They were always at it. Uh, there was all sorts of shenanigans going on with Sam and Mark, or uh, yes, and Dick and Dom and, and various people. It was always yes, they were always at me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Barney, Barney as well, and yeah, I mean, Barney and I used to get um, Barney Haywood, uh, Harwood, and I used to get uh, kind of. Uh, mixed, you know, mis- mistaken for each other quite often. So <laughs> you don't, you don't look that much alike. <laughs> no, but I think it was the, I think it was at the time he had us kind of dark hair that was vaguely mm. mullet. Sorry, Barney. Sorry, Barney. <laughs> and obviously, I had the, um, I had the, uh, the Raven mullet, and so I think a lot of people because we and we both had dark hair. I think they were just yeah, put a yes. beard on Barney, and 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 uh, they thought it was me. <laughs> I'm sure I, I, I can't even remember the name of the program, but I, I seem to remember on CBBC at one point there was kind of like a sketch show that took the Mickey out of other CBBC programs. Yes, there was. Yeah, and there was one, and it was Raven, but it was at home, still being Raven, no matter what. Yeah, I would like a cup of tea. That was and it. all this kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I remember. Yeah, I can't remember. That, sorry, I've got no hair. I, I think it was. It might have been that or, or one of them. I can't remember. Yeah. Now. I just have that vision exactly of what you just said of the cup of tea. Mm-hmm. A cup of tea. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Good fun. Um, I, I mean, yeah, when I saw you at Comic Con in Wolverhampton last year, um, I just remember the, like the surrealness of seeing you smiling and waving at people and being happy. <laughs> <laughs> it's yes, like, yeah, yeah, that was kind of always. Yeah, I mean, l- the reactions would be kind of two or threefold. Really, some people would go, "Oh my god, that is you. Oh, that's mental." And like they would kind of like like kind of scream and they would, couldn't figure it out because it was like, you know, suddenly they were transported mm-hmm. to being a child again. And then some people were like, oh my God, yeah, this is so cool. And, you know, and then there would be people who would just go, well, it can't be you because you're wearing like jeans and a shirt. And, you know, it's yeah. just, I had one one time, where was I? It was near Birmingham. It wasn't Wolverhampton. It was, um, was it Walsall maybe? I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Anyway. But a, a lady refused to believe it was me. Like she, uh, she would not believe it was me. I had to literally get my driving license out to prove it was me. <laughs> and then two minutes later, her friend uh, rocks up, stands next to her, and, and says, "Oh, it's you. I thought you were dead." <laughs> I was like, "What? Oh, wow, that showbiz. Thanks." Um, so yeah, in the space of ten minutes, one one lady didn't believe it was me, and the other one thought I was dead. So. That was pretty surreal, but yes, it, it always gets it always gets kind of different reactions from people. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, usually pretty cool. But yes, it's it's nine times out of ten, it's because they are they they're thrown by the fact that they've seen me in my in my civvies. You know? Yes, yes. I mean, yeah. when I had a photo of you and put it on Facebook, um, there was a mixture of people going like, uh, like not quite placing who you are, and um, yeah. so I'd have to put a picture of you in Raven costume to you know to show. Or um, a lot of my female friends all went, oh, I used to fancy him so much when I was a teenager and growing up. And I was actually yeah. speaking to a friend just last night saying, I'm going to be mm-hmm. speaking to Raven. She went, tell him that I, uh, I I fancied him so much when I was growing up. And <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, you seem to be uh, popular. Yeah, that is that. It's, the fe- it's, it's the John Snow effect. It's the feathers <laughs> and leather, you see. That's what it does it every time. I think it's a Scottish accent as well. People seem to... Pop- yeah, possibly. Like possibly. Possibly. <laughs> Um, yeah, but it's great that you do the comic cons and that you you know that you love doing them and, and long may that continue. And um, is it really cool that you know that you're, you're basically seen as a cult figure now, like you are the modern day Trey Guard of Nightmare, <laughs> <laughs> or the modern day yeah, Rich O'Brien of Crystal Maze? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I'll, I'll take both of those. That's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, it is. It's it's oh, it's really cool. It's 
you know, it's quite surreal. Um, but again, I, I, I see. I think it's a, a testament to the show as well, you know, and the fact that it was. It must have been good because it was. It became so popular and has lasted for so long, and people's kind of memories and psyches, and that's really cool. So I'm happy to to be a kind of ambassador and bastion for that for as as long as as people are interested, you know. And um, obviously I'm biased, but you know, Raven won two BAFTAs, has been nominated for several others. It's um, you know, it's we did. 13 series or in fact well no 15 series now you know like it, that 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 says something and it's something that I'm um immensely immensely proud to be part of so um being part of that kind of its cult status is is yeah is a is a is an honor it's a it's a badge I, I wear happily um and it is I have some amazing memories and experiences from it and to which I will always be grateful so yeah well, I'm happy to to carry that around but it is surreal it is surreal the different reactions it can invoke in people but like I say it would be the same if I met you know like um, George Peppard you know like from the A-team or something you know like I mean that was or B.A. Baracus I mean that was you know these are these are massive monumental moments in your childhood you know to if I you know ever got the chance to meet Scott Bakula I mean geez, oh you know Quantum Leap that would just be <laughs> surreal so yeah Good stuff, good stuff. And, uh, of course, if anybody wants to follow what you're doing or get in touch, you're on Twitter, aren't you? And you, you're always happy to receive um, Raven, yeah. Raven tweets. Yep, yep. And, um, and and if anyone have, has little ones and they think uh, Raven might be a little bit too scary, you can always stick on Molly and Mac on CBBS and catch me on that as well. So. Yes, you've jumped ship now to CBBS. haven't I have, you? yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd um, just, you know, keep the majority of my career going in children's television, you know. So, but obviously I'm biased because I mean it means my my little boy can can watch it. So I'm very happy about that. Wonderful, wonderful, and uh, of course as well. Um, like you, know, once the lockdown has eased, you'll be. I'm sure you'll be pe- appearing in comic cons uh, some more, and we'll see you on TV at some point as well. And, Absolutely, uh, yeah. We're, we're we're due to to film. Uh, Series three and four of Molly and Mac for CBBS um, at the tail end of the year now because obviously it got pos- it got postponed f- because of um, COVID um, and uh, yeah I mean I, I do pantomime and stuff most Christmases obviously not this one but um, yeah if you want if you have the inclination to to find me or want to see me then yeah you can find mm-hmm. me on the telly or on a, online or in a pantomime or a comic con I'll. Uh, I'll be around somewhere. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Well, James, it's been lovely chatting and reminiscing about Raven and hearing your stories. And, and like I say, thank you so much for taking part today. No, oh, you're very, very welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I hope I haven't bored or whittled on too much. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. And obviously, uh, I should probably say, by day you may see my shadow, and by night you may hear my call. May the luck of the Raven's eye be with you. And let the challenge begin. Thank you for listening, and thanks to James for his great anecdotes there. I'll be back again soon with another throwback attack, and don't forget there's plenty of previous editions to listen to as well. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Listener.